everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. And as always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. Starting off with Time of Legends Joan of Arc this week, we wanted to give you some additional information regarding the new solo scenarios developed by our partners over at Vesuvius Media. The solo scenario for the dragon is called Sir Eglamour's Trial. This scenario is based on the story of Sir Eglamour of Artois, a noble but lowly knight who is in love with Lady Christabel, the Earl's daughter. Well, the Earl is against their union and gives Sir Eglamour three impossible tasks to complete in order to win the right to wed his daughter. Having successfully completed two of those tasks already, he now has to defeat a dragon who has recently been terrorizing Rome. Approaching his destination, the knight is made aware of gigantic footprints near Monte Murillo and makes his way there with his escort to learn more about the beast before slaying it. You'll find this scenario in the legendary dragon book. The solo scenario for the beast is called Mists in Dom Remy. This scenario takes place during Joan of Arc's quest. In a moment of fleeting faith, she returns to her home village in Dom Remy to pray in the fields where the archangel Michael first appeared to her. An angel hears her pleas and comes down to her aid, but prayers can be heard in both heaven and hell, and the devil tries to coax Joan of Arc into signing a pact with him, but her repeated refusal angers him. So he commands the beast to come after Joan in an attempt to destroy her village and her soul. You'll find this scenario in the Reliquary book. The scenario for the Leviathan is called Darkness Upon Jumigas Abbey. From the depths of hell, the beast commands the Leviathan to raise the Abbey of Jumigas, which holds many holy relics that endanger the march of evil upon the world. Just returned from his defeat at the Battle of Akincourt, Ambrose de Lore, close ally to Joan of Arc, has a vision, an abbey engulfed in green flames. Knowing what such visions could entail, he immediately sets out for the abbey with his remaining forces. As the earth trembles and trees fall all around them, the small army gets into position near the abbey as an otherworldly army marches towards them. You can find this scenario in the Apocalypse book. In addition to their respective scenario books, they will also be added to the scenario collection book as well. Now, they're still being written down and translated now that development has concluded, so we won't share any more details about them. But for now, you can look forward to them bringing some variety to the other solo scenarios included in the game, while also using some of the less used mechanics from the game, such as equipment cards. For Super Fantasy Brawl this week, more information on how shipping is going. We've already seen many new excited posts from backers receiving their pledges. Some have been mid-game, while others are just proudly showing off the game like so much loot gathered from a plunder. Up to now, 40% of the pledges in Europe have been fulfilled. Our Asia and Oceana hubs have reported completing their pledge fulfillment. QML shipping for North American backers, including our Canadian brethren to the north, will begin on October 19th. Now, we are still very optimistic that everyone should have their pledges on their tables by the end of this month. However, in Europe, there are still some nearly 800 unconfirmed addresses that could extend complete fulfillment beyond the end of October. So make sure you've replied to those address verification emails, and if you've not yet received one, double check your spam folder, as some filters will flag emails from us and our hubs as such. Finally, we will have very limited stock in English and less than 100 copies available in French through our eShop. While the game will be available in retail, the retail version will be different. So if you were unable to get in on the Kickstarter campaign or let late pledge, act quickly. For Enchanters this week, we're gonna be showing you the plastic tokens that were unlocked as stretch goals during the campaign. The final quality is fantastic and they really upgrade the look of the game. 
In the images, you can see the Overlord Reward tokens, the Overlord Strength and Health Reinforcement tokens, the Wound tokens, Shuriken tokens, Pearl tokens, and the various crystals of the game. So take a look and tell me if it's not amazing. Moving on to Hell the Last Saga, you enjoyed our most recent music update so much that we thought you'd certainly like to hear more, especially since our composer, Leyes, with whom we're keeping in constant contact, is working and moving forward a little more every single day. So this week, we offer you a new excerpt from the soundtrack of Hell the Last Saga. This piece will accompany our heroes when they try to escape from fearsome and relentless pursuers. Now this is also a perfect opportunity to let Lies, our composer, speak to you directly. So here's a video for you of him explaining his specific approach to the project. Hi, I'm Lies from Nothing But Dreams, and today we're going to talk about the soundtrack for Hell, The Last Saga. Musically speaking, the atmosphere of the game is very compelling. A dark and gloomy ambiance based on a Viking-inspired universe is very inspiring. A lot of fun for a composer. Writing music for a game is a real challenge. Being able to immerse the player without being invasive, translating the scene that is being played without breaking the interaction with teammates is crucial. I ruled out going with the full Viking-inspired soundtrack. There is so much authentic music out there. The idea was to stick to the fate of the characters in the pack and translate the moments they were living through. The first sample released during the Kickstarter, named The Arrival, shows our vision for the soundtrack. A mix of drones, pads, and my first love, orchestra. Obviously, typical instruments such as the tagle harper, the horn, or the lyre will be a part of the adventure as well. Let me share with you the main theme of the pack. You will find different variations of it all along the campaign. I hope you will enjoy it. Thanks to the Mythic Games team for trusting me on this awesome project. See you soon in the next video! And finally, for Darkest Dungeon, the board game, we are going to launch the Kickstarter campaign on October 20th, 2020. This project was brought to life by one of the Mythic Games employees, Nick Neotis. He and his friend Argus Pugaris worked on this faithful adaptation of the video game as a passion project. 
When the Mythic team reached out to Red Hook Studios in hopes of being able to use the intellectual property and stunning art from Chris Burasa, their proposal was warmly welcomed and development promptly ensued. Having this passion project turn into the board game was the way to go. The core game will include several dungeon layouts and enemies, but will be expanded upon with add-ons during the campaign, which will add new environments and more deadly monsters. As we hinted at last week, the game is played in 11 mission runs. After beating the boss of a dungeon, you return to the hamlet to recover and level up. Once you've vanquished enough bosses, you move on to the darkest dungeon and face your ultimate foe. Should you lose too many heroes before then, or succumb to that boss, players lose the game. The runs are very replayable as you can experiment with the different heroes, skill loadouts, missions, team compositions. However, the game does not comprise any legacy-like elements. So make sure you save the date of October 20th, 2020 as the launch date for Darkest Dungeon, the board game. And we'll hope to see you there for a very successful campaign. From this week on, we will also start to publish some in-depth articles about the game, so make sure to check our blog regularly for more information. In the meantime, for more news and a bit of fun, be sure to join the Darkest Dungeon The Board Game Facebook group, the link to which can be found in the description below. Well, remember that Leo will be live later today at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or just to hang out with Leo for a little bit. But that's it this week. Stay home, stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and hey, We'll see you on the flip side. Take care.